now. Uh, I'm here to take all your questions. So let's sound off and see what you got. If you got to take off, that's fine. Uh, thanks for stopping by. I appreciate it. And uh, I'll see you on the next one. And let's get into Q&A. What do we got? Let me stop this stupid banner. Ah. Thaddeus, hope to see Celsius recover as well. Yeah, my girlfriend has most of her crypto on there. It's not me. Like for me, like I just follow my rules and just didn't leave it on there. Did I leave someone Celsius? Yes. Did I leave someone sell on Voyager? Yes. It wasn't my life savings. It wasn't the whole portfolio. And that was the thing. Uh, Wolfman, I hope it turns out in the way that people get their money. Sure is a serving situation. And that is from here. Wolfman contacted me via DM and said, look, man, I'm a disabled vet. 51 years old, single dad. And I have 25,000 in Voyager. All my savings are in this pandemic. What can I do? Wait. That's the only thing we can do. There's no recourse right now. There's nothing to do. Civil action, civil lawsuits. Uh, I believe there's even a clause in that uh, EULA and user license agreement from Coinbase that uh, it's a band together for a civil lawsuit. I don't think it's, a, it's legally allowed. But I could be wrong. Again, don't trust me. Take a look. And uh, there's nothing much we can do right now. And uh, hope that these other places come in and swoop up and buy them out. And we can open up for withdrawals. But again, when the trust is gone, it's gone. And that's it. What I think probably will happen is everybody's going to take a big, everybody's going to take a haircut. Whether that be 5%, 25%, 50%. It's going to take some time maybe a year or longer, and then they get their crypto back. Hopefully in a year, it's worth a lot more than what it is now. And we go from there. I don't, me personally, I don't think that, uh, that uh, we'll lose everything. But again, I also never thought that uh, Voyager would be lending out some crazy amounts of uh, loans to a place that was a bunch of degenerates. Did they know they were degenerates, Three Arrows Capital? Probably not. But it is what it is, and here we are. Let's see. Alpha, Alpha, Alpha Ping. Most chapter levels are, are unsuccessful in chapter seven. That is true. I don't know. I don't know the statistics, but we go to chapter eleven. It's not great. However, if you get a multi-billion-dollar company like uh, Moelis and uh, whoever it was, Global, maybe there's a little bit of hope. Can't say. Wolf X man, thanks guys. I'm a, I'm a disabled vet, single parent, just like we talked about. These are the people that it hurts to hear these stories, and it hurts to hear the stories on when Celsius happened, now when this happens. So that's why the rules are in place. Rob, oh, that's a good one. Hodel Sats. This is so Hodel Sats is uh, also uh, saying had the same question, and he put up. Let me see if I can find what he. Hodel Sats, I got you. I'm going to answer that question. Where are we? Uh, let me bring this up. Oh, here it is. Ah, here we go. Perfect. So let me share my screen. So Hodosat's brought up uh, this point. Gary at Hodel Sats. Hey, Rob, remember this? And I was like, yeah, I do remember that. Uh, holding Voyager for massive passive income. And this was uh, over a year ago. And I talked about how great it was to gain yield from Voyager. That's true. And uh, here's a question for everybody. Here's a question for everyone. I'm not going to be mean, but I have to ask you the question. Uh, I've, I've used Voyager for almost two years now. And uh, it worked. It did what it said it was supposed to do, which was I could buy crypto, I could sell crypto, and I gained yield. So I just need to ask everybody, did that never happen when you use Voyager? Okay. So that's not the case. Remember those not your keys, not your crypto? And we talked about taking things off. I'll admit where, I, where my shortcomings, which was I should have been beating this in everybody's head, these rules. And if they got sick of them, they can go. But I didn't. And I'll rectify that now. But 
this is what happened before and this is where we're at. So, and then to answer Hodelstat's question, Rob, how much do you, uh, how much money do you get paid for shilling sweat coin? So absolutely zero. And also I don't get paid for any of these places to show them. I, they are affiliate links, but I say that in this in the, all the time. There's links in the description, affiliate links. You don't have to use those affiliate links, but if you do, you get a perk. And if you don't want to, you can go right to that, that site. Have, have you heard me say that before? Same thing. So Sweatcoin, they don't pay me a dime. And actually, Sweatcoin is a free app. It is a free app you can use to download and get sweat coins, or sweat tokens, whatever they're called. And then in September 12th, you get a token generation event where they airdrop you sweat. Not in the US, that'll come later, hopefully, but off that. And then lastly, I will be investing a ton into them because that makes sense to me. They have a revenue profit and all that stuff. Because just like you, when you came here for YouTube, did you see an ad? That's their revenue model. That's where they make money from ads and things like that. So hold on sets, I hope I answer your question. And I'm sorry I was a little bit short with you. Okay, uh, let's see. Yes, Joshua, make sure you go over and detail the USD and Metropolitan Bank. I believe I did that. <laughs> One step outdoors. Chapter 11 worked out okay for Apple. It did, but again, hard assets. And Hodel Sats asked us to Gwen again. Sandman, nope, not leaving. He led innocent people to hell. I'm guessing you're saying that I led people to hell. I don't think I led them to hell. I think I talked about a project that I use a lot and a crypto exchange that I used a lot. And uh, when I found out that they were not on the up and up, there was problems with uh, Celsius and the Three Arrows Capital Contagion, also the Voyager and the issue with collateral, I let everybody know. Again, you can find those videos very simple. Just go to June 12th and you'll find the Celsius video and June 22nd and you'll find the Voyager video. So, Rob Crumbs wants to find some other people. Thank you. I appreciate it. Austin says, I'm okay with Voyager holding my crypto till they get things fixed. Yeah, me too. And I have a lot, but it's one of those things. Long as I can keep the coins I have and get them back later. Though I do keep most of them. I got to ask you guys, this is a question. This is the situation we're in, not the ideal situation. But what if this takes two years and then we hit another Bitcoin halving and then maybe another bull run. And then at that point, they release all the tokens, all your crypto. I wonder, I wonder what that would look like if people are like, yeah, it's pretty awesome. I like that. Or if that's like, yeah, they screwed me anyhow because I had it for so long. Linking with Nas, with Nas. Ah, sorry, man. I lost so much money on Voyager. I wish I'd take it off the exchanges. If you didn't study the history of past crypto exchanges collapsing, you really haven't been doing your own research. Yeah, you know, the longer I'm in, the more crusty I get and the more of a Bitcoin maxi and things that I become. It's just because it's just safer, unfortunately. Been watching for a year now. I believe I make more decisions. Still, Rob brings a news. Sure. Hello, <laughs> fellow mods. Okay. And then, holy smokes. Bronco? I have over 400,000 locked in Voyager. I hope you are a multimillionaire. Yeah, too late for cold wallet. <laughs> Slayer says, how much behind the scenes does James complain about Ada having a higher mark cap than Solana? After his Ada will never pass Solana. We talk after the shows, he doesn't seem too, I mean, he, he does say like, he's, he, James does say, he's like, you know, I hope they, uh, I hope they uh, can get faster in the TPS. Seems like uh, they could do some really good things. This is exactly what he says. Looks like they could do some good things. I mean, he's not like been out of shape about it. Ah, that goes from above. I will be on his show. Did I say Thursday? I think it's over with Voyager. Let me know when the exchange didn't survive. Yeah, potentially so. I hope not. But you know, we talked about the great merge yesterday. And for some of, for crypto to really make it, uh, some places have to die. Projects have to get swept away. And we have to clear out uh, for the future. And I got to tell you, if, uh, if Voyager is one of those places and you had another place to swoop them up, what if in the future it's just Binance, FTX, and Coinbase? And that's it. Because everybody else just fails to do all this crazy lending. And they didn't have 
and they, and they spent unwisely. If that's the case, and they buy distressed assets, and of course, then people take a haircut, and what would that look like? Just three exchanges, or maybe like a Swift X in Australia, I don't know, Wazir X in India. But uh, yeah, we'll see. Yeah, this is the part that sucks. The, the messages and the, the emails, and I feel bad for people because, like, I can talk about my journey, but then, you know, people say, well, I just didn't do this or didn't do that. Ooh, it's a great question. I trust capital. Where are they? So I just, uh, we're going to have them on in a week or two. But remember, I trust capital. Now, here is one thing there is no DeFi plays with I trust capital, there is no lending. There is no three arrows capital nonsense. There's no Luna, Tierra, BS. The way they make money is, again, the trades, the 1% uh, that you can trade in your Roth IRA account. And that's it. And they're not like, you know, making a huge amount of money. They're just a regular business. And then of course, as far as like custody, they use Coinbase custody, which is the same that MicroStrategy, that Michael Saylor used to contain their Bitcoin and other, well, just Bitcoin, but that's what they use, so. That's just it. Who will be around in the future after the flesh out? I don't know. See, and then this is a good point right here. Where the hell did I go? Ah, sorry, there's all these different comments that keep coming in. Are people afraid to use a ledger? Not your keys, not your coins, is the first thing you learn in crypto. It's true, but it just goes over your head. And this is why, like, I can almost guarantee in a year, a year and a half from now, people will either kind of put this in the back of their mind is not, not an issue. I mean, you say you're going to remember now, but you won't. I mean, you'll remember a little bit, but not that stinging feeling. And then in a year, people will like, ah, it's okay. You know, and then of course, when new people get into crypto, ah, it's all right. That's why I'm going to keep that, those rules up there as long as I'm around. SBF is a magician. Oh, and also people afraid to use a ledger or something. I think they are. And I think the problems is just, just the basic education. Like, how do you set that up? How does that look like? What do you do? How do you, how does it work on the ledger? Where are my Bitcoin? Why can't I touch it? That type of stuff, right? You know, there's a website. It's 100% free. I made it free. It will always be free. Dan teaches crypto. Module two, safety. I go over how to not get screwed over by scammers. How do you, what's a crypto wallet? What's a public and private key? How to use your nano ledger. And then also, uh, also the MetaMask wallet. How to trans transfer crypto assets. I don't know how many times. I'll just keep saying it until, <laughs> until I have no subscribers and no one wants to listen. But uh, that'll, I'll be that for the long haul. So yeah, it's a good point. What do you think about BlockFi? Also rumors swirling about uh, them getting bought out and things like that. Zach Prince comes out and says, no, it's not true. It's not going to be sold for $25 million, It's $240 million. Again, if you have crypto on any exchange or any place that you don't have control of your private keys, time to take it off, period. Ooh, I like that. Maybe Coinbase needs to die. Have you tried Adelaide? It's way faster. Yeah, well, Ada was always fast. Um, and that Basil hard fork, they're in the test net phase, I think at the end of July, then it goes live in the main net. So that's the whole thing. It's supposed to help increases for, for dApps, increase the TPS, and um, I think cheaper transactions. And CoinSpot, they've been around for ages. I think they're safe. Don't trust anybody. I don't care anymore. Crow scalping people trying to remove Bitcoin. You know, as far as I, I saw, I saw a statement from their CEO saying that they had no 3AC contagion. So that would be interesting. Crypto is a scam. I'm on Coinbase. Flare would be a good place. I just removed two Bitcoin from, okay. <laughs> I don't trust capital. That's a good one. Yeah, Mr. Slim said it right. If Voyager wants to survive, giving back most of the users' assets will be crucial, crucial long-term. So, Here's the thing, though. Would you still trust them? Like, if they came back, would you use them, like, to buy and sell? I'm just asking. There'd have to be some big provisions in there. I just don't see it, unfortunately. Yeah. 
educate. Rob, thanks for repeating solid advice. For everyone who lost, consider that the price of your lesson, learn more and more. Thanks for you do more advertisements for cold storage. Yeah, I should. I'm afraid because if so many people are using it, it's going to get hacked. Ledger's never been hacked. However, Ledger has had a data breach. Don't forget that. But that's a difference between the data breach and then stealing your crypto. So, yeah. DNV says it right. Don't trust Verify. Any chance Kubin buys Ledger? Well, they are in partnership for the Dallas Mavericks. Hmm. I will say that's an interesting thought because we just did a video yesterday about Mr. Wonderful, Kevin O'Leary, about his platform, Wonderfy, how they just bought out like their third exchange in uh, Canada. And they're really moving into the crypto space. And he's been a big proponent for like, I don't know, two years now. Before that, he hated crypto, but whatever. And he's a shark, shark tank. Mark Cuban's a shark and he partnered up with Voyager. I think this would be an excellent opportunity for that billionaire, Mark Cuban, to own his own exchange, just like his buddy, Kevin O'Leary does. Hey, Mark, uh, Kevin's beating the pants off you in crypto. Maybe you should step, step in the arena. Exchanges are like guns. It's a good point. Guns don't kill people. People kill people. Exchanges don't take your money. People take money in risk management. Yeah, most kept credit in the yield. I, I did too, but after I saw those stories and then I was like, I got to take this stuff off. Got my ledger this morning in the mail. Great. Watch the videos. Yeah. Junk Bond says, cold storage is important. Yes, but why is no one talking about diversification? All in on any project is crazy. Yeah, I don't... I haven't talked about this in quite some time. But... Bu, 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 bu. Like, I don't know if people think that I just invest into crypto only. I think that's uh, a recipe for disaster. Let me show you something and bring this up. If I can find it. I can't show you that. Ah, here we go. Boop, boop, boop. So this would be like my diversification, right? So I keep 5% in iTrust, 5% in cash, and that's fluctuating. I'm keeping more in cash. 25% was in USDC. Now it's going into cash. And the USDC, I mean, you can have, an, I have a bunch on uh, Ledger because it's USDC is an Ethereum-based uh, ERC-20 token. You can also, I also have uh, some on, MetaMask. So that's it. 5% is in Masterworks. I think a little diversification. 50% is land. 20% roughly is in real estate. Actually, that number went up a little bit. 10% is my Amazon business. 15% is in staking and so on and so forth. And I also have played a little bit in the stock market, but just like the basic basics. Like I buy Amazon. I've had Amazon stock for a while because I have an Amazon business. So I thought, why not? And Tesla and Mara. And uh, oh, I stocks of Airbnb because I'm an Airbnb. So like this is my diversification strategy. And um, some go, as one goes down, one goes up. One goes up, one goes down. So that's just how it is. All right. Yeah, I think this is a good point. People are so used to the safety of banks, they treat exchanges the same way. And I have to tell you, it's the same thing. Like I was just thinking about this yesterday. I'm like, this is the first time when you would ever be able to take, a, if you had a good amount, a massive amount of money and actually take control of it digitally wise. Hold on. Sorry. So like if you went to the bank and go, if you had a hundred thousand in the bank, so give me a hundred thousand dollars. Sir, we don't have a hundred thousand dollars. And they'd have to, you know, they have to scrounge that up later on. And then if you say, okay, well transfer it to my wallet. Like we talked about, uh, we don't, we, we don't do that. You can transfer it to the, to the, another bank but of course the other banks another bank this is the only time in history where you can take possession of of cash of revenue of of um, uh, currency of money and actually have it in your possession and outside of the other system electronically and you could transfer 
$10, $20, $20 billion to anybody you wanted to without any authorization, without any type of third person. And you can do it without any questions or observance. This is the only time. And to me, it really hit home when I was thinking about this whole thing with Voyager. Now I can, you know, you, you can do these things. But again, if you're at like Wells Fargo and you're like, hey, I want to take all my money off. Like, sure, here's, you know, here's 500 bucks. Uh, you can take that, but we don't have anything else. We don't have 100000 or $200,000 or whatever else it is. And if you want to transfer it, it's just another bank. It's the same system. So, sure. Uh, short glitch, you should do that. Create a YouTube channel to remind others. That's a good idea. Is Gemini safe to DCA? Well, look, you got to buy it from somewhere. I'm going to do a video, though, on Lightning Network. Using the Lightning Network to buy Bitcoin and going that route. But of course, if you're into other cryptos like myself, Ethereum and Cardano, you're going to need an exchange somewhere. But that, does that mean that you have to leave it on the exchanges? No. We just talked about. Yeah, Alameda objecting reorganization plan with Voyager. Yes, yeah, so that was one of the parts in there. In another section, I believe, was Alameda. No, it wasn't Alameda. It was Three Arrows Capital. They denied the, re the reorganization plan. And of course, Alameda, they could have came in and been one of those 60, but they said, no, this time frame doesn't look good. Yeah, DNB says Ledger database. Again, that was the people who bought a ledger. Just like how your, th this wasn't, this was like the personal information like your name and your email and stuff like that, which happens all the time in the, in the uh, uh, web 2.0. Great question. Diamond hands investing. What a great pick. What's your advice to people who are new to crypto and are scared away by this? Develop your rules, whatever those rules are. You can take a look at mine. Maybe they work for you. Maybe they don't. But you have to understand that for investing, there's all options that are out there. If you want a more safer, if, if volatility and the uh, disruptions aren't your thing, this is not place for you. This is go maybe take a look at the S&P 500, put in $10 per year and just be safe. And that's it. I'm exaggerating a little bit. However, if you take a look at where all the biggest gains are, and I know this is kind of a degenerate way to say it, but it's really in all the new technology. A lot of people that invested into uh, the dot-com bubble, a lot of those people got wiped out because they invested in everything. And there's only a, a handful that actually made it. So these are the ones when I talk about what to invest into, take a look at the things that have been around for quite some time. Just go to CoinGecko. Go to coin, no, coinmarketcap.com forward slash historical. And you can take a look at 2011, 2012, 13, 14, all the way to 2022 to today and just see what's been in the top 20 for the longest time. That's a good place to start. And of course, scared away by this? Well, this is very simple. You can, like we just talked about, you can custody any of your crypto that you want to. You don't have to leave it anywhere. It doesn't have to be there. Just like banks. You know, banks aren't foolproof as well. Uh, they've had runs in the banks, but that's why the FDIC insurance is in place. Of course, I understand that. However, look globally at the different banks that are out there and the high inflation rates. You can get out of that system. You can get out of that system right now with crypto. That's just something I would say, look at that first. <laughs> Baynard, who's Dan? I'm Dan. But my name is Rob. Digital Asset News, it's an acronym. Did you talk about Voyager being scammers? So Freddie, I don't think Voyager are scammers per se. Some of their statements were very disingenuous. I will tell you that with that FDIC and the thing that Paul Barone talked about. But Again, this is not going to be popular, but this is what it is. When you used Voyager over the last however long it's been around, were you able to buy and sell crypto? Were you able to take and take a look at the documentation behind it? Were you able to gain yield? Did they pay you that yield? Okay, all those things are true. Maybe. Maybe not for you. But for me, it worked out until it didn't. And then, of course, when that happened, June 22nd, talked about it, I took it all off. If they did what they said they were going to do. They just blent to the wrong group. A bunch of degenerates, don't sue me. Uh, Got to stop saying that. Uh, three arrows capital, but it is what it is. 
Yes. Shocked how well you pull yourself when dealing with those more messages you get. Marty, it, it's just like, it's like Plato says, one of the, one of the Stoics. Uh, be kind to the people that you come and encounter with because you never know the battles they're engaging in. So it's not just me pouting, stouting off, pouting off, what is it? Spouting off and, uh, you know, beating people down. It's just me, pe me trying to listen and going, I understand, I get it, but this is, this is where I come from. Uh, yeah, Adam's got to, the first time I use a ledger, I was shit. I was, <laughs> I was essing bricks because I was like, man, I just transferred like 10 grand and like at a hope and a whim, but it always works. And then also, I don't know. I did a video. I think it's right here. Let me see. Yeah. There's a video where it's called firmware update. And the first time I did that, I almost passed out because it stopped working for a bit. And I was like, what the hell? So watch this video if you have to update your firmware because sometimes it just blanks out. But again, if you have your mnemonic phrase, it doesn't matter. You can just get it right back. That's what I did when I came from uh, Puerto Rico over to here. I forgot my ledger. I just bought a new one. It came here. I redid the mnemonic phrase and then boom, off I was off. And of course, I started to take things off Celsius and <laughs> Voyager. So that's that. Yeah, so Ledger doesn't support many coins. It's possible to find out how to hardwall other crypto, but it takes research. Yeah, and then here's another thing. Like if Ledger only supports, it does support a lot, but if there's like, if you're getting some really crazy coins out there, that's why we have the video on MetaMask. Because again, and this is why I, I like Ethereum when not a lot of people do. It's because everything's built on Ethereum, essentially. So in, in the MetaMask, you can have the Binance Smart Chain, you can have uh, Polygon, you can have Ethereum. And most of those coins are going to go right through Ethereum. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. I've been called worse today. <laughs> uh, do you think Bojang will crash? Of course it will. If you can sell it somewhere. What do you think about KuCoin? I saw that there was some slowdowns and withdrawals and uh, there were some issues, but it seems like it's still operating. People are, are getting withdrawals. But again, is it a centralized exchange? Then you know the answer. Yeah, that's a green screen. I'm here in my mom's basement. Smoke shack. Nexo does look okay. And they're in talks for um, a merger with, who was it? I just talked about this yesterday. Oh, I think it was Nexo and Celsius, but not for sure. Don't quote me. Watch yesterday's video. Uh, Dougie says, I, keep, I kept putting off setting up my own wallet until I got a good PC and procrastinating on getting a hard wallet. If I can get extra money again one day to invest, I won't make that mistake again. Exactly. And you know what? This also, Dougie's got a good point here. And it also comes down to just staying on top of stuff. You know, there was this thing that I talked about called zero exchange. I thought, eh, that'd probably be pretty good. So I uh, put some money into it and put some more money into it, some more money into it. And uh, then I just didn't pay attention to it. And they had this token swap event. And I just missed it. And uh, now I have like five figures dollar-wise worth of useless coins. I think they're worth like a penny now, maybe two pennies, I don't know. And it was just because I didn't stay up to date. And that's on, and whose fault is that? That's my fault. That's really what it comes down to. So yeah. So Dougie's, you know, don't make that mistake again. I won't make that mistake again either. Don't trust any central exchange. So Noah says, correct me if I'm wrong. What's up, Gabe? My USD and Voyager is held by the Metro Commercial Bank and it's safe. The cryptos I have are unsecured and possibly lost forever. Noah, take, watch this video again. Go and watch, or if you have Twitter, go to at News Asset. And there was a video they just put out. Metropolitan Commercial Bank put out a snippet. And they said, look, we are FDIC insured. We are FDIC insured. And what Voyager does is it passes through to, to Metropolitan. So if something happens to us, then that's where legally you have ramifications. But if something happens to Voyager, you don't. However, on that flip side, Steve Ehrlich, the CEO, did say this today. 
It's important to note that as part of this announcement, we are confirming that customers with USD deposits in their accounts will receive access to those funds after a reconciliation and fraud prevention process is completed with Metro Commercial Bank. So that's what I got. And uh, that's what it is. So hopefully it does work out. Yeah. Do you think Binance staking is worth it? If it's the Binance Smart Chain, sure. And that, that's the thing. So like people will say, well, what about, what about the yield and keeping things on there and then limit orders? That's why I'm like, look, the goal for me is always 0% exchanges. But does that always happen? No. That's why on Celsius, I lost 3% of my portfolio because I had things over there and I was gaining yield and I got stubborn. However, if we can get the closest to 0%, I think it'll be a lot happier as opposed to like we just talked about some people losing $300,000, $25,000, their life savings. That is not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about two, 3%, if at all, anything. Sandbox is pumping and pumping. Yeah, I think it's because uh, there's been some big plays for Meta, AKA Facebook, as they start to move into the metaverse and people, are, people associate Sandbox with metaverse and, yeah, and that's the thing. There's a $500 million Alameda loan to, to Voyager. And it's like, that's a lot of uh, liquidity right there, but there was some provisions for that liquidity. And I don't think that Voyager is able to meet that at this point. That's why I'm thinking that Voyager is going to, or Alameda might step in. Thank you. Yeah, amazing. Okay. When Doja Dollar? I don't know. <laughs> Stupid question. Have you, have you flipped against Voyager is still bullish? On the token, obviously not. Remember, uh, I did say, was it December 7th, 2021? I think it was December 7th, December 6th, 7th. I said, Voyager token is going to 30 bucks. I said that. Did not delete that video. You can go watch it right now. And it went from 29 cents up to $3, then $5, and then $7 within three weeks. Then it crashed back down to like three. And now it's not going to be worth anything. So, of course, if we were to listen there, you probably made some pretty good gains. And hopefully you took some profits along the way. But no, uh, I do not think Voyager, the token, is going to go up anytime soon. And uh, people are going to keep asking me this question, and I'll keep responding to it. Also, you know, I used to recommend Blockbuster. Just saying. I don't know how far back people want to go, but I'll go back as far as they want to. And I'll show up every day to answer these questions. All right. I pulled all my crypto off Voyager two weeks prior to them stopping anything and everything was touting Voyager should be off YouTube. And everyone that was touting Voyager should be off YouTube. Again, again. Were you able to buy and sell crypto on Voyager? Were you able to gain yield? Did you take your crypto off Voyager? I mean, I'll say it all day long. I'll stay here for three. I'll stay here for three more hours. There's a video on YouTube of someone taking a ledger apart and hacking his ledger shot. Yeah, I saw that one. But uh, that was, I saw that exact video. And you have to understand that was before there was an update to their firmware. And you could do that, but it was like two years ago or something like that. <laughs> this is funny. Mark Cuban batting zero for three in crypto. Yeah, he had to have some problems with like iron finance and things like that. Thoughts on staking in Ledger? Uh, I saw that was an option. I'll probably just have to take a look at it and do a video. But I try to get the, the team from Ledger and from, I forget the people that are, the company that's uh, making that happen. And none of them, neither of them wanted to come on. Uh, maybe I just didn't make my point clear. What's the expected price of Sweatcoin? When I have no idea. I just like the app. I mean, I bought some like uh, some goofy little ear ear headphones from there. And all I had to do was walk. So Kevin O'Leary is a big time shill. Well, of course he is. Look, anything that you invest into, you're probably going to talk. I think there's a big difference between a shill who gets like a bunch of stocks or tokens, talks about the project doesn't believe in it and dumps on everybody. As opposed to someone who uses the product, believes in the product and talks about it constantly. See, I'm that guy. I'm the guy that's like, you know, I like Bitcoin. 
So uh, I'm going to talk about it. I like Ethereum. I like Voyager. I like Sweatcoin. I like all these different things. Uh, I like Cardano. And uh, that's it. People are like, well, you're a shill. I'm like, well, yeah, because I invest into it. Why, what am I? Am I going to invest in something and not talk about it? That's it. <laughs> Again, some people don't like me for that. They think I should just talk about Bitcoin, which is funny because all the people who are big into gold are like, why do you talk about Bitcoin? You should talk about gold. And all the people who are all about equities like, why do you even talk about gold and, and crypto? You should just talk about equities. Can't win. That's just what I like. Ah, yeah, my camera's shaky. Sorry. It's because I keep pounding the desk. Yep. Thanks, Mullet. Yep. Expensive. Hello, 100 Air. It's funny. Yeah, so the CEO can sail away with millions of your money. Don't think that's going to happen. Mm, you have to rebrand. Yeah, trust is gone. You're correct. Should I leave my money on Coinbase? Caveman, what have we been talking about for the last hour? Come on. Ugh. Moonbell's going to beat me. Thanks for shilling Sweatcoin. I saw it today on Mailman, which means he's going to beat the pants off of all of us. Yeah, everybody likes Echoes. Ah, yes, Benjamin Alexander. One tree pushes a few months. Yes. And uh, the month before that, and the month before that, and the month before that. So let me ask you a question. When you used Voyager, were you able to buy crypto? Were you able to sell crypto? Did you gain some yield? Did you take it off? No? I don't know what happened. I, not your keys, not your crypto, right? On June 12th, I believe we did a video on Celsius. You can look at uh, in the video section where I talked about, hey, June 12th, something wrong with Celsius. You should probably take it off, your crypto off. Then June 22nd, we talked about Voyager and said, you know what, something wrong. With, uh, with Voyager, you should probably take it off, take your crypto off. And then on top of that, bop, 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 bop. there's these things called rules that I'm always talking about. Did you know that you shouldn't invest more than you can afford to lose? It's true. I know it's crazy to think. Did you know that everything's a scam? And if you don't like scams, you're probably in the wrong place. Treat everything like a scam, you'd be a lot better. Don't leave anything on exchanges because we just saw what happened with Celsius with Voyager, and there's a litany of more to come. So nothing should be left on exchanges. Take it off. You have the ability to do that. And if you don't and don't really know, it's okay. Neither did I at some point. Just go to danteachescrypto.com. It's 100% free. I built it free. I made it free. It'll always be free. And in chapter two, I tell you exactly how to use it. Don't use leverage. That's for me. You can use leverage, but these are my rules. 25, 50, 100x, not a good ch chance. Take profits. It's a good idea to take profits along the way. So uh, let's see. Where did it go? And that's it. So, hope I answer your question. I know it's going to get annoying. What happens if FTX buys out Voyager? People keep their assets then. That would be a whole part of the restructuring process. If FTX comes in and says, you know what? I think that'd be pretty, pretty bad form to say, we're going to buy Voyager, we're going to absorb that, and we're going to take all these cryptos, these assets, and absorb them into the FTX platform and not give anybody their funds back if they want to keep Voyager open. I think that would look uh, pretty awful. You would probably have to take a haircut of how much gets taken, and how much you're able to uh, uh, get back from what you actually put in. That's just how I see it. Uh, just store your private keys in multiple places. That's a good point. If it's your only your private key, nobody will be able to figure out whose it is. So they can't use it. Grandma's attic, eight pound bucks. A DVD. Uh, let's see. That's a good point. Make sure you buy your ledger from Ledger. Don't buy it off Amazon. Yeah, because... What people will do is they'll sell it on eBay or Amazon and they'll have access to the mnemonic phrase. You put your crypto on it, then they'll reset it after a couple of days and they get all your crypto. So Brian, I think if FTX buys out Voyager, you'll get your crypto back. The percentage of, of how much you get back is up in the air though. But again, this is all a restructuring process for chapter 11.
Yeah, that's true. You, sh you buy something, you should be able to do whatever you want with it. Very true. Oh, really? I thought it was the other way around. Trezor is for beginners, ledgers for the more tech savvy. Hmm. Thank you. Sukhdeeper R, you're the first guy who was trustable enough to get me into crypto. And I can't even tell you the number of times I heard you say take profits and not your key in the crypto and the amount of risk. Would you use USD in the Solana network? I don't know. Well, yeah. I mean, USDC came out and said that 80% uh, is backed by bonds and 20% is by fiat cash, I believe. So I like USDC. I just don't like using it on Ethereum because it's uh, the gas fees. So maybe Solana. It'd be interesting. I think Solana's cheap. Michael says, maybe make a video on claiming FDIC insurance on our accounts at Voyager. Could do it. So that's just it. Well, allow me to take back the 500 million loan. Well, if they can't, if they default on the loan, so that's, that's where things get tricky. Because if you got a 500 million loan, or I thought it was for 15,000 Bitcoin plus 200 plus million in USDC and a cash equivalence. I always forget. But uh, you, they have to pay that back over time. And if they default, then of course, now then they go into illegal proceedings and it's just awful from there. So if it was me, I'd be like, well, if Alameda Research wants to buy anybody, just, maybe that was the down payment that they gave them for the company. Mm. And let's see. Somebody said, now I need to figure out how to get StormX on a decentralized exchange. Just download the wallet. That's what I have. I have StormX wallet and I put it in that wallet. I have control of the keys and I stake everything there. Damn it. Thanks, you Piper. Uh, let's start adding some mods. Let's see. Hold on. Let me pull this up. Let's start adding some mods. <laughs> uh, well, there is one. Congratulations, Piper. Oh, nice. Who did I? All right, and you get a wrench, and you get a wrench, and you get a wrench. And... <laughs> Hold on. Damn it. There's so much, there's so many comments coming in. Lummox. I'd be the worst. That's cool. There's a lot of mods in there. <laughs> okay. Wrench army assemble. All right, that's what we got. Great. So a lot of new moderators. Thanks for stopping by. Look, guys, it's uh, an hour and 18 minutes. I got to get going. So I know that probably wasn't like the greatest information you probably want to hear. I'm pretty sure you want me to, to, to hear that. Okay, in two weeks, this is going to happen. And you'll be able to take your crypto off and that's where it is. But it's not the case. It's going to take a little, as usual, things are a little more complex and there's things happening behind the scenes. Once I figure everything out and I know, I will let you know. And that's how it works. So look, if you like today's video, thumbs up, subscribe. I would recommend the subscription or at least follow me on Twitter or something because like these things, you can't just let this go and let this slide. These are your investments. And it's important that you stay up to date as much as possible from as many people as possible. If you don't want to listen to me, I got a, a list down in the description of all the people I listen to, like a Simon Dixon, like a Coin Bureau, like uh, Best Dancers and like uh, Into the Crypto, or all those guys. So at least listen to somebody to keep you up to date with the news, what's going on, and go from there. So that's it. So thanks, everybody. I appreciate it. And uh, Jarky, sorry. Ah, I always mess up this gentleman's name. Jarky Bridgerson. Sorry. Thanks for the super sticker. I appreciate it. All right, everybody, go enjoy the day as much as possible. I'll see you in the next one. Adios.